My name is Katie Bickham, and I'm an artist and a writer. I chose to talk about the prison series by Giovanni Piranesi. There are over a dozen of, of etchings in this series, and they're all interesting and, and kind of work together towards a larger goal. The etchings take place in a in fictional prison. These prisons are not real. They're part of uh, Piranesi's imagination. And because of that, they include lots of elements that really couldn't exist. Um, they have staircases that either are broken off or, or lead into walls or just stretch on into eternity. And no matter how many corners of the prison you look into, there's always more beyond the eye. So they stretch out infinitely. They're drawn with these several vanishing points. So you get the impression that you're looking from above and below all at the same time, which adds to that sort of infinite feeling of, of the prison. I saw these, these etchings for the first time about 10 years ago uh, when I'd come to the Norton with a friend. And being in my late teens, I was really interested in anything dark and, and gloomy. And these, these prisons, these etchings really struck me as Kind of, they were just sort of my taste, and I didn't think much about them, but over the years, I, they have reoccurred to me several times, and now that I look at them, I see that there are some things about them that, that strike me as strange. So even though they're prisons, we don't see a lot of cells, and there are so, also aren't very many people in them. There are lots of etchings that don't have any people in them. And so that combined with this idea of this endlessness and, and confusion of the prison makes me think of it more as a, a fantasy prison, a prison of the mind that that doesn't really function, uh, but is more of, of a, like a mental idea of being trapped in one's own head. Piranesi was practicing uh, something called capriccio, which was a way of sketching a landscape using fantasy elements. So the first use of capriccio was when these tourists would come through Rome, where Piranesi lived and practiced, and they would be looking for souvenirs to take home, typically sketches of the Colosseum and, and other ancient Roman ruins. And many sketch artists would simply sketch what was in front of them, but some would try to combine all of the elements of the land, Roman landscape into a single scene. The sketches ended up not being real, but being very valuable to the tourists. That's the same way that we see um, snow globes of New York City with all the skyline elements kind of mushed together. And so Piranesi was skilled in creating these semi-fictional landscapes using real elements, and, and that's the same way that the prisons function. Everything that you see is architecturally sound and would function if it were to be built, but these all came from Piranesi's sort of fantasy life. And he once said to someone interviewing him that he would have enjoyed being God because he liked the idea of creating an, uh, his own universe and thought that he was up to the task. He studied architecture and, and also worked and had some training in theater, and so much of the constructions and the prisons resemble the backstage of a theater. There are like pulley systems and curtains and things that seem very similar to a theater. But overall, I think the etchings are valuable and have stuck with me just because of this idea that there's what we do in waking hours, but at night we're kind of alone in our dreams and we all have had those dreams where we seem to be stuck somewhere and can't escape no matter how many stairs we climb or our hallways we venture down. So the prisons for me are representative of that, that trapped feeling.